This is Beyond with Heather Tesh, where we examine near-death experiences and life itself, hopefully making this life a little better. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My guest is Philip Hossider. Philip, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you, Heather. It's really a pleasure for me to speak with you. Oh, it's fantastic speaking with you. I loved hearing about your near-death experience, and that, of course, was in the previous episode, and I'll have a link to that. But right now, I want to dig into some questions I have, because I have so many questions about uh, what you went through. But real quickly first, you did die for six minutes. This was a cardiac event. How are you today? Fine. Wonderful. There was no, no damage done whatsoever. And so which was another puzzling aspect of all of this because, well, I had never had heart trouble, but still, uh, with all that it went through, the, the stoppage, which I was told later, I, it, six minutes plus uh, the time it took for the EMTs to get across the street uh, is about the outer limit of what they expect a heart to recover from once they are, are trying to work on it. So there had to be more to this than just luck. It sounds like divine intervention. And you were, after all, before the creator of everything. You saw this gigantic sphere. Um, you called it the source of all creation, and it was sending these waves of kind of light washing over you. So what was it like to be that close? And, and you know, was it loving? Was it intimidating? Did it give you knowledge? Just tell us more about that experience. The first thing I'm going to start out by explaining is that I used uh, an analogy of understanding, uh, likening my brain to a computer, okay? Uh, say my brain has 10 gigabytes of memory, and all of a sudden I'm infused with 15 terabytes of memory. Well, what would happen? Probably it would crash just like a computer would crash. So I, at this stage, I do believe I was only given enough memory of what I experienced that I could safely bring back to this dimension and still be able to function from a human standpoint. So what I remember from that experience, I do believe now is not all that I experienced and that some of it has uh, come back since then a little bit. Uh, I don't think the full extent, and I'm not sure I will ever learn the full extent, but that's okay. I, I've had enough uh, understanding of what I experienced and memory of it to be able to uh, explain enough that I'm satisfied with. And when it comes down to the whole thing, it's what I understand and what I believe that probably is the most important thing. Now, I, I share it with others, and I hope they would uh, believe that what I understood to be true and that they can get something from it. But uh, I may sound a little cold hearted when I say, okay, fine. If you don't want to believe it, that's, that's your choice. But what's important to me is that I do know and I do believe that. And, and in the end, that's, that's what's important to me. So the whole sense of what I felt there in translating it back to human terminology was one of acceptance. It was one of love. It was one of genuine welcome. I did not feel any condemnation. I did not feel I had to atone for anything. I did not feel I had to um, regret anything. There were no regrets. There was no hate. Hate is not a, a, a sensory thing that is, uh, exists in that higher dimension. Um, it was all welcoming. 
I mean, if I could be welcome there, certainly everybody else can be welcome there. What was your faith going into this? And then how did that change coming out of it? Well, I was brought up in in a United Methodist tradition. Uh, I wouldn't say I was an active churchgoer. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm, you know, a, a, a rabid religious person by any means. And I know people won't take this kindly, but at this stage, uh, organized religion does not hold any resonance with me. Because to me, organized religions are a a man-created organization. The essence of what we are is to accept and acknowledge the divinity in every other person beside us. Uh, The person sitting next to you at the restaurant, the uh, person driving next to you uh, in the car. Uh, the person across the world who you don't even know, uh, we are to accept them as we are accepted. No questions asked. Uh, that That is what I felt there that when I came back makes total sense to me. Uh, most of our problems, well, all of our problems that we have now uh, is because we do not recognize that divinity in another person, that they have as much right to be here as we do. Um, it, it, it was like understanding that our bodies are more than some of its parts. So is the person next to us. But we are all made from the same creation essence. And when when I saw these these jets coming out and understood those to be some sort of life form that we might comprehend or even a life form that we can't comprehend because we're not God and we're not the ones who created it. But each one of us here are part of the DNA of that source of creation. So we're all the same. We have the same commonality, but because of, I don't know, egos, uh, greed, uh, all the other human words we want to use to describe a lower energetic level, uh, we've forgotten that. And um, that's why we do have problems. And this all reminds me of a quote in your book, and I'm going to read that quick and then I have a question on it. You said, any inadequacies or disappointments I may have felt during my life on earth no longer mattered. There was no residue of my past actions for which I had to atone, no shame as to what I had been or had done. Now, this is some of what you just addressed, but what sometimes upsets people when they hear that is because they want other people to pay for the harm they've done. And a lot of people bring up the example, well, what about Hitler? You know, there's no way that Hitler is experiencing this wonderful place. So what are your thoughts on that? This probably won't be popular, but I will explain exactly what I think and my sense of what I experienced. Those that we condemn for actions they took and we're, we're, we do it today all the time. Um, they chose a lower energetic level, but it was their choice. Now, people may get wrapped up in what happened to be their choice. I, I won't deny that. But if, if you, if anyone honestly looks back at the time they made a lower energetic choice, a decision one way or another to do something or not do something. Anytime you took the low energetic level, it probably didn't turn out too well for that person. And in the end, it didn't turn out for him. Um, we, we all have choices. 
I believe that we are given once once we left as that spark from that God essence, once we left there, we individuated. We became separate, but still the essence and DNA of that God essence. We carry that with us. We carry that. Each of us carries it with us now, even if you don't want to believe that. And that's fine. I I like to, I, I'll explain it this way. Um, at some level previous to my coming into this dimension, I made a decision that I wanted to come experience this lower density energetic level. And so I came down as that spark. And I was born with my parents. I was raised by them. I have now lived 72 years in this, in this body, minus, minus six minutes. And when my body uses up its energy or its fuel, I will go back to that dimension and I will continue on because the part of me that is eternal is that energetic spark that came to fulfill the essence of this body, um, the essence of your body or anyone else who's listening to this. And that once, once we are done with this body, our essence will still go on. That cannot be destroyed. So we can judge people by our own biases as to, well, they don't belong there because they did this. Well, some people will say, well, he belongs there because he did this or she. And there, there is no categorization. There is no level of achievement to be accepted in that dimension because I was completely accepted and I, I didn't even ask for it. I mean, I didn't, I didn't really ask to have uh, a sudden cardiac death. Uh, I didn't ask to go there, but there I was. So it taught me that, well, we can deny all this stuff and that's, that's a choice. But in the end, we're all going to find out that we're going to go on to another existence, maybe in a, one of those other infinite dimensions that I saw. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. It's not that I want to leave right now. I mean, I'll, I'll fulfill my time here if, as best I can because I have family and uh, I enjoy that and want to experience other things here that human experiences. But I, I'm not worried that I won't continue to exist after I've less, left this body because I, I've seen that it will continue to go on. And to me, that's the hope. Uh, to me, that's the, the gift that we are all given, whether or not anyone wants to believe it. All I can say is, wait it out. You'll find out for yourself. In the end, you'll, you'll realize that what I said was true. And, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't consider myself any, any kind of a saint, uh, by any means. But I was accepted and I was welcomed for all my frailty, for all my indecisions, for all my, uh, things that I've done that may not have been good in the past. I was accepted because I was accepted. All I felt was I was there and it felt so good. So yes, I think everyone, uh, regardless of how we judge them or what terrible things we feel they did, maybe to us, maybe to myself, maybe to someone else, they will be accepted because they are still the DNA essence of God. And I do not believe that a God that is 
a, a divine creator, a source of all creation, however you want to identify that. I did not believe that that essence, in all its love, would create something and then want to destroy it. I just because that essence did something that was uh, not acceptable to a group of people. Now, I I do believe, uh, and to me this is really important, I do believe that we seek to claim a God that fits our own biases, our own egos, and want to use that as a way to control other people. I'm going to leave it at that, but that's that's what I believe. I also want to dig into a few things that you saw that are hard to understand. <laughs> you said that you saw infinity, that you know you looked out into eternity, and the farther you saw, the deeper you saw, you know, the more clear it was. So what exactly did you see? Well, okay. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to that. I'm going to back up just a little bit to try to explain this. When I understood that my collapse was a combination of all these different threads of my life that had positioned me in a certain spot, and some people call it predestination, I don't want to use that word. It's just, this is how my life filtered through the the years in that I was placed at a certain point at a certain time. And then when I had my collapse, I shot through a prism and came out the other side with a completely different set of eyes. And so what, what I experienced before that it was basically a demarcation line in my life. What I experienced before that was much different than what I now look at it in the same same way because I have a different set of eyes to look at it. So seeing eternity, trying to bring that back to some human vocabulary is like seeing an endless, endlessness, a spacelessness, um, it, the close, I could suggest for people to start with, and I did this many times in my life before my collapse, you know, trying to imagine what is like the edge of our universe. Uh, you go in one direction. And you, what are you going to run into? A brick wall? I don't think so. Some people have, some physicists have said, well, maybe you just run into nothingness. Well, okay, that's still something because it occupies the space where there's nothing in it. And, but if you're only going in one direction, what about all the other myriad infinite directions that you haven't looked at? So infinity itself, to me, at this point, is just uh, uh, endless, endlessness, which is why I understand that we are of that part. We are endless. Now, when I leave here, I may choose to go to one of these other dimensions that I saw to experience whatever it is is there. I mean, I have an idea. If you can think of an infinite number of dimensions, then you can think of an infinite number of possibilities of what that system would be. Maybe their planets go the opposite way around. Maybe they have uh, animals only. Maybe they don't have animals. Maybe they just have people. Maybe they don't have people. I don't know. It's just, I can't say that I've recalled any of that, so I'm not sure I've been to them. But um, the co-joining of timelessness and spacelessness uh, is really an intriguing aspect of what I experience because we look at time from a human perspective, uh, Earth time, which has only been, you know, what, a couple dozen thousand years, I don't know, uh, 
when when time was first started. I mean, we use it as a way to map our existence. However, Earth time is subordinate to eternal time because before the Earth was formed so many billion years ago, there was eternal time before that. And after this universe is gone, there will be eternal time after it. So we are encompassed by eternal time. Now, to me, the, the important aspect of that is that we can trans, I don't want to say transport, but we can move between dimensions. And I know that for a fact because I did it and I remembered I did it. And some people have asked me, well, are you sure you weren't just imagining that? And fair question. Uh, I spoke with a nurses group from our local hospital uh, who were interested in, in hearing about what I experienced. And one of them asked me that question. Well, how do you know you weren't dreaming it? Well, my, my best answer is this. And everyone has dreams. And uh, when I have a dream, I usually can't remember it in the morning. It, it kind of dissipates into the ethers. I mean, if I can remember one thing out of a dream, that's really a rare occasion. And I think if people would um, examine their own, they'll, they'll find that to be true. But my experience that I had after I collapsed in that dimension has not changed one bit. I can remember everything that I experienced there in the way I experienced it every time I think back to it. Nothing changes. It's always the same, and it's as clear and vivid to me now as it was when it happened. So I do know that we can move back and forth between these dimensions. Uh, and if that's true, then why can't entities in another dimension come and experience here? Now, I, I mentioned earlier that I needed this human body to experience the sensations of this lower density dimension. Uh, my spirit could probably enjoy it here, but wouldn't get the same sensory uh, perceptions that I have with a human body because of being in a lower dimension. So why couldn't, why couldn't uh, other entities, essences, spirits come here to just experience it, not take a form of human body? And so People, people may refer to them as angels. They may refer to them as, uh, I like to use the term guides. Uh, for me, uh, I've met my, or I met some guides in uh, uh, three different occasions. Um, and that was important to me because I needed to know if my experience was true. And I asked a specific question a number of times. Finally, I got an answer. And one of them was that night in bed when, when uh, my wife said I, I had woken up and started talking, but I don't remember it, but that's neither here nor there. But it uh, is a way to, for me to believe and not doubt what happened. Because I, was, I wanted to be certain that I was not being deceived. And that, in turn, I wasn't deceiving myself. And in turn of that, that I was not going to deceive anyone else with a false narrative. So when I had the confirmation that what I had experienced was true, then... He was fine. I, I'm happy with it and uh, satisfied to be able to explain it as best I can. Now, that's a little bit of ways from you. You're asking about the, the time aspect or the infinity, but it's all wrapped up in that. It, 
it's not one single simple answer. There is more to the whole concepts and experience. And it's complex. It is. It is complex. And with our base understanding here in this level of what we think can be possible and what we don't think can be possible, why couldn't anything be possible? We, uh, you know, all the answers to all of our problems are out there. We just have not evolved to an, a, a point where we can understand them. And a lot of us wish we could. Oh, sure. I do think you're, it's interesting that you talk about all the possibilities because the more of these near death experiences that I listen to, the more I just see that, yes, there are so many possibilities and why not? Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's so fascinating. Well, it, ironically, yeah, uh, take this for what it's worth, but I had no idea that there was such a thing as a near death experience prior to having my own. And then I didn't know what it was. Um, once I understood something dramatic had happened, I really kind of shut myself in. I, I tried not to read any uh, literature or anything relating to, to death at that point because I was trying to understand it myself to find my own answers. So I didn't read anything about it. And, and when I finally wrote out uh, my, my thoughts, which became the manuscript, uh, it was only after then that I realized, well, there are other people out here who, who've had that. Who knew? I didn't know. But, uh, yeah, the more, the more now that, uh, I've opened up and have talked with other people that there are a lot of people who have had them. And still, I think a lot of people who have yet to want to admit they've had them because they're afraid. Of course, you have written all this down in six minutes in Eternity, which is an incredible book. And we'll talk more about that coming up. But for those of you that are listening, we're going to go into part three. And this is, I think, to me, some of the most interesting things um, that we're going to talk about. Because, Philip, I can't wait to ask you about these universes upon universes, just an infinite number of those. But let's go ahead and take that into part three. And please, everybody, share your comments. And if you like this, give it a thumbs up. Okay, thank you. Looking forward to it. Okay, so what do you think so far? I would love to know your thoughts. Share them in the comments. Also, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, go ahead and put made it in the comments. I always appreciate that so much. There is still a lot to talk about with Philip, and that's why I went ahead and I recorded a part three and a part four, and I think they are all really interesting, so I hope that you'll come back for that. Thanks for joining me on Beyond with Heather Tesh. Please add comments and questions you'd like future guests to answer. Also, if you liked what you heard, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. That'll help keep this podcast going. You can also go to Beyond with Heather Tesh to look for more episodes.